Hi, I'm Neil Worthen with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership here at the Santa Fe, New Mexico Wastewater Treatment Facility. And today we're looking for ECOs, or Energy Conservation Opportunities. Performing an energy audit of your wastewater plant will involve more time and effort than what you'll see here, but come on along while we do an energy audit. Energy costs are probably one of the largest single line items in your budget. 4% of the energy produced in the U.S. is consumed by water and wastewater facilities and experts are predicting that energy costs in this country are expected to increase up to 20% in the next 15 years. This amounts to $4 billion in annual energy costs just for water and wastewater plants like these. It also amounts to 44.8 million tons of greenhouse gas used to produce that energy. If we could just reduce energy consumption in these facilities by 10%, we could save $400 million and 5 billion kilowatt hours each year. Wastewater treatment plants are typically designed to meet peak capacity without regard too much to operational efficiency. We strongly encourage wastewater agencies, large and small, to invest in an energy audit. Energy audits can be done by architects, engineers, Rural Community Assistance Partnership has an active energy audit program for small rural communities. We have certified energy auditors. You can contact us if you'd like to have one of these done. Also, an energy audit can be done by your own plant staff. This is a kilowatt hour meter, much like you might have on your house. Think of this as the utility company's cash register. Your tariff or your rate schedule is your contract with the energy provider for them to reserve capacity and demand for your use. If you reserve too little and use more, you're going to pay a penalty. If you reserve too much and don't use as much, you're going to still pay a penalty through things like demand charges and so forth. This facility serves a population of about 65,000, paying roughly $42,000 a month for energy, about 6 million kilowatt hours of energy per year. The city of Santa Fe is taking positive steps toward energy efficiency. The fields behind me used to be sludge injection fields. Uh, the city is now composting most of its sludge, which left a lot of open property for these photovoltaic panels. The city sought and received funding to install these, these panels are producing about 1,200 kilowatt hours of energy all the time that the sun is up. For a small rural facility without the kinds of energy needs that we see here, there are state and federal tax incentives that will help defray the cost of installing panels like these, even on a single building. Outdoor lighting is another large consumer of energy at a wastewater treatment plant, especially one that's staffed 24 hours a day, such as this one. These big outdoor lights need to be left on all night long. There's dozens and dozens of them here at this facility. Absolutely necessary for safety and security. If you have a facility that's not staffed during the night, it's important to put these on a timer so that they're not burning at night unless you have an issue with security when the plant's unattended. In doing energy audits, many times we have found outdoor lights such as these left on during daylight hours. Uh, which indicates that there's something wrong with the timer or the sensor. Indoor lighting is another energy factor at wastewater treatment plants. There are more than a hundred of these four-foot fluorescent fixtures scattered around this plant. Fortunately, there is ample daylighting in this room also, so these fixtures have been able to be delamped, basically meaning taking half of the tubes out of the fixture. There are energy companies that are offering energy incentives for delamping fixtures. One that I know of is offering $7 per lamp removed from fixtures like these. Many wastewater agencies are switching out to UV or ultraviolet light as a primary disinfectant to get away from the inherent hazards of using and storing chlorine gas. Maintenance is the key with ultraviolet systems. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to produce ultraviolet light. Turbidity in the wastewater flow does tend to stick to the UV tubes. Cleaning these tubes is a constant task. When the tubes do get fouled with turbidity, the effective dosage of ultraviolet light can drop, which indirectly drives up the cost of operating these systems. The largest single consumer of energy at most wastewater plants is air, the energy used to run air blowers. It takes a tremendous amount of air to keep this biomass alive, which is actually what's doing the treatment here. 
most wastewater agencies can realize quite a bit of savings by retrofitting from coarse bubble diffusers to fine bubble diffusers. Agencies that do that will typically realize a 20 to 40 percent savings in energy. Let's go take a look in the blower room. This wastewater treatment plant has three of these 300 horsepower motors, two of which are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These motors are about 20 years old, which means they're running at about 91% efficiency. Changing these motors out to premium efficiency motors would cost about $33,000 each and would save the city about $7,800 a year on energy. The payback to change these motors out would be about less than five years per motor. We're now in an auxiliary blower building, meaning that these blowers are only used when needed. Uh, we've got some 200 horsepower motors here, which a few years ago were premium efficiency. In fact, it says premium efficiency right on the nameplate. These also have the efficiency stamped on the nameplate, 94.1% which is pretty good, but nowadays these motors could be switched out to 95.8% efficiency. That would save some money, but I have a feeling these motors aren't used too much, so this retrofit would not be a good payback. Of course, at most small rural wastewater treatment plants, you wouldn't expect to see 300 horsepower motors. But for, as an example, you could take a, a 50 horsepower motor, take those figures that I quoted you, divide by six. If you had a 20 horsepower motor at your smaller facility, you could divide by 15 and you could expect comparable energy savings. Performing an energy audit of your wastewater treatment facility will involve some time, some effort, and a little expense also but in terms of long-term sustainability, it's worth it. For Rural Community Assistance Partnership, I'm Neil Worthen.